Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVengers. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies, combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventurer. In today's episode, I wanted to go over uh, three potential targets that are um, readily available for what we're doing. Basically, camera bodies. Uh, most people are shooting with uh, crop sensors, and it's not uncommon that people have a 150 to 600 millimeter lens available. And so I'm going to take a look at and go over three possible targets for the end of May. Now looking at the calendar here, between May 21st out through June 2nd, in a combination between the when the, the moon is up, uh, when it's not up, the sun setting and it becoming truly dark and the sun starting to rise and messing up uh, an evening it looks like at various combinations of time between may 21st and june 2nd you can get anywhere from four hours to uh let's see here a little bit over five hours worth of shooting time on any given night in that window provided that you have the uh, time to you know fit between the moon rising and the true darkness of the sun being far enough over the horizon to get rid of that last bit of light. Now, let's go ahead and get started and we're gonna jump into Stellarium and take a look at some targets. With Stellarium all booted up here, you can see that we're looking to the uh, southwest sky. And I have the constellations along with their names turned on. Here in Stellarium so that you'll be able to uh, find these. Now one of the things is that I uh, will often use myself because obviously uh, it, it's real easy to locate these various constellations on Stellarium but looking up into the night sky can be quite difficult and part of that can be is the darker the sky the more stars we have and the more prominent ones uh, kind of tend to get washed out. So an app that I use to help me in identifying the stars we're seeing here on the Stellarium screen is I use Google Sky. And Google Sky uh, allows you to you know, hold your phone in the general direction to see the constellations. And that gets me started with locating these constellations to move forward with locating my actual targets and the star hop from constellation to the eventual target. Now, of the three, the first one that we're going to take a look at here is going to be Markarian's Chain. Now, Markarian's Chain, located right here between south and southwest, so south-southwest, um, this is a great target to shoot. And if you're unfamiliar with it, let me continue to zoom in, you're going to see this chain... Of galaxies that runs through here. Uh, this is an awesome target and to shoot this target, one, I suggest framing up off of Markarian's eyes and that's this section right here. And what I do is I frame up with this being kind of low in the image and you'll see that here on the screen how it's all framed up and this is based off of a crop sensor using a 150 to 600 millimeter lens. And so you can see this all fits in very nicely within that focal length. Uh, if you don't have a lens that goes out that far, that's fine. You can still shoot this target. It's a great target. Uh, with this target, it does have a magnitude of 10. However, I haven't found this image to be particularly difficult because there's such a concentration of light in each one of these galaxies. So I encourage you, Markarian's chain. It's a cool one. Uh, obviously, you're not going to get a lot of a lot of detail in each one of the galaxies, but it does give you this cool chain of galaxies. 
And then just to show it to you here, and you can see the end of Markarians. And here is the horizon. Now, this is a little bit misleading. It's actually sitting higher up in the sky than what it appears here on the Stellarium. You, you just can't quite gauge that off of the Stellarium program. Okay, next one that I want to bring you to that's an excellent target to go for is the Whale Galaxy. Now, it's located just a little bit above, and you saw how Stellarium moved up here. And you can see this is where the Whale Galaxy is. Here's Leo, Virgo. And let's just move this down so you can see the horizon. So there it is, southwest. And then it's really high in the sky. It's a really, really good target because of it being, you know, virtually overhead. You're shooting through the thinnest bit of the atmosphere versus shooting through it. You're just going to punch through. And you're also going to have your minimal amount of glow coming off of any horizon cities. So this is a great one. Now let's zoom in because this is actually a two for target. Now here is the whale named because it kind of you know looks like a whale kind of and then right beside it we also have the hockey stick uh, galaxy that's located right beside it. It's also known as the crowbar. And in this image, you can see how I framed up to actually capture both of these galaxies. Now, the magnitude on this one is a 10.5, but uh, you, you can do it. You can capture this. And obviously, the more time that you can stay on target, the better it's going to be. And it's not located that far off from our Carrion's chain. So, there you go. There's the second target that I'm going to suggest. And like I said... It's kind of a twofer. They're right next to each other, easily frames up. And then let's jump back out here. And let's zoom over to the last target. Uh, here we go, over to the search. And the last target I'm going to suggest is up here to the north on the pinwheel. Now, let me adjust this a little bit. So down here at the bottom, you can, at the bottom of my screen, you can see north. And here we have Polaris, and we have the Big Dipper. And currently at this time of the year, the Big Dipper is, you know, virtually upside down. And the pinwheel is located right here. This is a perfect time to go for this target. And the reason being is because in its rotation around Polaris, right now it's the highest in the sky that it's going to get. And with that, again, rather than photographing through the atmosphere, you're punching a more direct straight line through, so you have less atmosphere to deal with. And let's just zoom in here on the pinwheel. And there you go. There is the pinwheel. And as you can see in this image, this is what it looks like when it's all framed up again. Uh, framed up at 600 millimeters on a crop sensor camera and you can see the the outline and framing as to what it will appear on your camera and this particular target is a magnitude of 7.8 um, 7.9 but it's one that shows up really well now with all of these targets mentioned none of them are needing to be shot with an astro modified camera you're talking about targets that are smaller and really out there Later on in the summer as we get closer to fall and Cygnus gets higher up overhead, that's where a lot of you that are looking to shoot um, large nebulas and also have the bonus accessibility of shooting with a uh, Astro Modified, you know, that will really kind of come into play at that point. But for right now, we're shooting galaxies that are way, way out there. So there you go, three galaxies. Um, Markarian which is Markarian's chain, which is actually a group of seven. And then just above that, you have the uh, twofer of photographing the whale along with the hockey stick or crowbar uh, galaxies. And then to the north, you have the pinwheel sitting up high. Now, between all of these targets, uh, yes, you have Markarian's chain and you have the whale and hockey stick 
that are positioned ideally at this time of the year where the pinwheel always stays there. But the pinwheel right now is at its highest point, so it's in the best location for shooting through the atmosphere. So if you can make it work, um, try and get on top of all three of these targets. They're all outstanding targets. Uh, lastly, before I let you go, if you are new to Astro Venture, just so you know, we have a Facebook group called Astro Venture DSLR, and that's where the New Moon crew is, along with other astrophotographers doing photography with camera bodies and lenses and simple, you know, star trackers. Additionally, um, you know, get in there, ask some questions, and, you know, just kind of hang out. And if you liked the content that you saw on our YouTube channel here, I encourage you, share the video, like it, subscribe, and help us grow this channel. Until next time, I want to wish you clear skies and uneventful nights. Hey there, Astro Ventures. Thank you for uh, hanging out till the end. A little bit of a bonus that I want to share with you. I mentioned in this video how I had looked at the calendar and figured out that between the 21st of May all the way through June 2nd, there was available shooting time each night. I'm going to uh, put this up on the screen here and you'll be able to pause this video so that you can take a look at it. But let me explain the information that I've put on here. So for example, I'm just going to grab the, uh, let's say, uh, May 24th. So May 24th, where I'm located in Utah, north of Salt Lake City, the actual true dark, when the sun is far enough over the horizon that no light is reaching me anymore, is at uh, 2244 or 1044 at night. And then on that given night, I looked it up to see as to when the moon would rise and when it is that the sun would rise. And on this chart, I listed as to which would affect it. And in this case, it's the moon rising at 3.50 a.m. And that happens before the actual sunlight will start to affect it. So on that particular day, there's a total of five hours of shooting time. Now taking a look over on May 27, you can see here, for my area, it's dark at 2248. And then in this particular case, it's the sun that ends up affecting shooting time versus the moon rising. And in that case, the sun rises at 4 a.m. Now with this, um, the times that I have put on there is, granted that 4 a.m. is the next day, but I have listed it on the day that you start shooting. And I kind of look at that as well, you know, that's the end of my, my work night and photographing. So I've included it there so that you're not having to look at the next day. Uh, let's see here. And then finally, on uh, June 2nd, you can see here the sun will set at 2256, but the moon sets at just after midnight. It's technically June 3rd at that point, but um, on June 2nd there, just after midnight at uh, 8 past midnight is when the moon will actually set. Now, I listed both of those times there because that way you can decide based on the direction of your target and how full the moon is that night as to whether or not you want to start shooting. And then for me, again, where I'm located here in Utah, the sun rises at 3.55 in the morning. And when I say sun rises, that's not the actual sun rising, but the first rays of light that will start to mess with the night sky for me. And so on that particular night, I have a total of four hours of shooting time. So, um, you know, if this is useful, pause the video, check out the different uh, times here. And then I will see if I can manage it time-wise and maybe generate this each month. Please give me some feedback in the comments below as to uh, if you felt like this was useful. And, and obviously, it's not necessarily going to match exactly to where you are. But I think with this bit of information, you can do a little bit of research and see how to adjust these times for your own specific location. So there you have it, a little bonus for those of you that stayed to the end. Clear skies and uneventful nights to you. Have a great night.